Cyberpunk 2077's official next-gen update is here. Version 1.5 brings with it new content, bug fixes, and new ray tracing effects for high-end graphics cards. For those below the minimum requirements, however, developers CDPR have added Fidelity FX Super Resolution support to help make low-res gaming more tolerable. Whether you're stuck on an integrated GPU because you can't get the graphics card you want, or you have a small form factor machine like the ASRock Desk Mini X300, this might just put Cyberpunk back on your radar. I picked up a Ryzen 5 5600G because a lot of my colleagues on YouTube have been recommending it as a placeholder for those who can't get a graphics card right now. Its Vega 7 integrated GPU isn't the most powerful on the market, but it does have an awful lot of potential. Likewise, Cyberpunk is a game with the potential to be the next crisis. It is still one of the more technically challenging games on PC, and owning integrated graphics capable of running it at anything better than potato settings is still something to flex about. I'm testing the Vega 7 on my moderately priced gaming PC, with its 16 gigs of DDR4 configured at 3200 speed with CL16 timings. This is about the spec of the most popular bang for buck kits of RAM out there today, and a good budget pairing for the 5600G. The CPU is locked to an overclock of 4.6 GHz, but that isn't too relevant here. It's only 200 MHz above the CPU's boost speed, and let's face it, even at stock speeds, the CPU will be held back by its integrated graphics, not the other way around. At stock GPU and RAM speeds, the Vega 7 can't really give a genuinely playable experience at 1080 low settings. Averages are only a little over 20 FPS, and 1% lows are around 13. Driving is pretty tough at these frame rates, and combat is even worse. In the past, of course, I might have suggested dropping to a resolution of 900 or 720, but what we have instead is FSR. Applying the highest FSR setting, ultra quality, renders the scene at 1477 by 830, and certainly improves frame rates. Averages climb over 30% to 28, and 1% lows increase to 17. Some might find this acceptable, even enjoyable, but we're not done yet. FSR quality is equivalent to dropping render resolution to 1280 by 720, and doing so sees frame rates average over 33 FPS and lows of almost 20. At this point, I would probably not recommend going any further down. 33 FPS is generally smooth enough, and we've already had to sacrifice some visual quality to get here. Going further down the FSR scale, however, can yield higher frame rates. FSR balance starts to look mushy with its render resolution of about 1129 by 635 but FPS climbs once more to an average of 36. FSR performance is being rendered at a mere 960 by 540 and it shows the image quality at this point is pretty poor. In return for this sacrifice, the game outputs an FPS of about 43. Easier to play than lower FPS for certain, but harder to identify exactly what the hell's going on. Now, someone might have thought to themselves, hmm, these numbers seem okay. I wonder what happens if I turn the quality preset up from low to medium. Well, that person would probably have had a fairly unpleasant afternoon of benchmarking, but in case you were wondering, the native 1080 medium run on this iGPU saw a barely playable average of 16 FPS. Actually, no, scratch that, it's, it's not really playable. Adding FSR helps, naturally. Ultra quality increases frames to 22, and quality increases them to 27. Going further with this seems remarkably pointless. Increasing visual settings only to then turn them into a blurry mess again is pretty futile. But for the sake of completeness, FSR balanced scrapes over 30 FPS on average, and FSR performance reaches 35. There is actually a setting below FSR performance called Ultra Performance, but I don't really approve of it. This, of course, isn't the end of the story. One thing everyone knows about integrated graphics is that they use the system RAM as VRAM, and therefore faster memory can see substantial improvements in FPS. If you're lucky, you might have a kit that can be overclocked to a higher frequency. Alternatively, maybe you've spent the not inconsiderable extra money on a kit of DDR4-4000. Well, 
I sort of lied. My kit happens to actually run quite nicely at 4,000 mega transfers per second with CL19 timings. So I went back and tested again. 1080 low saw increases of between 3 and 8% to average FPS, which doesn't sound that impressive. Some of the biggest increases, however, occurred at the low end. The 1% scores jumped, in some cases up to 25%. Although I wouldn't normally recommend spending more on RAM for an APU, if you're intent on maxing out this chip, or you won the RAM silicon lottery and can overclock this high, this makes the ultra quality FSR option suddenly very viable. The medium quality preset sees much less of a clear cut improvement across the board, with a fairly consistent increase to averages of 4-5%, but with lows essentially within margin of error. What might be more fruitful, if you have a B450 or 550 motherboard or better, is overclocking the GPU. Now, I've been told by very smart people on the internet that this is less important than RAM overclocking, but in this particular instance, overclocking the GPU isn't as stupid as one might think. Overclocking just the GPU by 500 MHz sees average FPS increase by between 7 and 11% across the board, even on medium settings. This of course makes sense, as despite being memory starved, the iGPU actually isn't using all that much VRAM at these quality settings, whereas the Vega 7 natively has way less horsepower than the game really needs. 1% lows, however, don't benefit at all from the GPU overclock, so that made me ask, ¿Por qué no los dos? Well, a quick intervention first. If you can overclock your GPU by 500 MHz and can get your DDR4 working at higher clock speeds without spending money, then this is an absolute no-brainer. On the other hand, if you're thinking of buying a new motherboard, cooler or high-performance RAM to do this, I'd just like to remind you that you could put that money towards an old but gold GPU like an R9 290 or GTX 970 that will give you an infinitely better experience and that you can resell later to put towards the GPU you really wanted, but couldn't buy for whatever reason. Okay, so with that aside, let's do this. Averages see between 13 and 18% improvements across the board, and 1% lows are up as much as 50% in some cases. 1080 low isn't so low anymore, averaging 25 FPS with lows of 16. Turning on FSR Ultra quality almost reaches 33 FPS, Quality is getting close to 39. Balanced and performance hit 43 and 48 FPS respectively, and ultra performance also exists. Medium quality is getting interesting. I'm still not sure I recommend it unreservedly, but the performance boost from overclocking might convince you to give it a try. Without FSR, it's still unplayable at 18 FPS, but with ultra quality FSR, it runs at over 25 FPS. Quality runs at over 30 FPS, doesn't look bad, considering, and would in all honesty probably be my personal choice in this scenario. Balanced and performance reach 35 and 40 FPS respectively, which again I say more out of a sense of completeness than as any kind of recommendation. I don't have any historical data for these tests. I didn't test the Vega 7 in Cyberpunk pre-patch. The tests I do have are for the Vega 6 on a Ryzen 3 4350G. That chip managed to overclock to just over 2200 MHz, but it still ran 720 low at an impressive 35 FPS average and lows of 21.1. For comparison, the Vega 7 at 2400 MHz, with the same 4000 speed RAM at FSR quality, only managed to beat that by 3.5 frames with 38.5 FPS on average and 23.9 FPS 1% lows. Without picking up another 4350GE, I can't really confirm this, but it looks like Vega iGPUs haven't seen the same kind of love that has been afforded to cards like the GTX 970 in patch 1.5. Nevertheless, FSR should be a welcome addition for APU gamers and those looking to wait out the scalper pandemic. Thanks for watching, hope that's been useful to you. Kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.